It's a Minimalist Monday edition of Optimal Finance Daily, episode 146, Understanding the Diderot Effect and How to Overcome It, by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. Get ready to maximize your potential with Optimal Finance Daily, the podcast that brings you the best content in personal finance five days a week. Your optimal life awaits. Now here's your host, Dan Warren. Hi, everyone, and welcome to a brand new week of Optimal Finance Daily, where I read to you from some of the very best personal finance blogs on the planet. And before we get into today's post, just a quick reminder that we give away a book by The Minimalists on the first of every month, and that goes out to a random person on our email list. And not only that, but if you join that list, you'll also get your hands on three incredibly useful spreadsheets, all for free. Just come by oldpodcast.com and enter your email address. And once you're in, You'll get those digital downloads automatically, and you'll be entered into the raffles every single month. For an even faster way to join, you can text the word FINANCIAL to the number 44222. That's text the word FINANCIAL to 44222. Now let's get right to our Monday post and start optimizing your life. Understanding the Diderot Effect and How to Overcome It by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. I am not a psychologist, nor am I a philosopher, but I've spent a lot of time thinking about the goals we pursue, the things we own, and the items we buy. I find it to be a fascinating study into the human spirit. There are countless reasons we buy more stuff than we need. Some motivations are pushed upon us by society, but other causes seem to spring from our own internal motivations. Either way, arriving at a healthy understanding of why we buy more than we need is a worthy pursuit which is one reason why I find the Diderot effect to be such an interesting phenomenon. This motivation for overconsumption, originally noted in the 18th century by a French philosopher named Denis Diderot, is still commonplace among us. The simplest explanation of the Diderot effect, or at least the part I am most interested in, is this. The introduction of a new possession into a consumer's existence will often result in a process of spiraling consumption. In other words, the purchase of one new item often leads to the purchase of another. We can see this play out in small ways. Last week, my wife took my nine-year-old daughter school shopping for the upcoming year. On her shopping list was a new backpack. After viewing her choices, my daughter chose one, but this new backpack does not match the lunch bag she used last year. And so, almost immediately, new lunch bag was added to the shopping list, even though her lunch bag from last year still worked just fine. The introduction of a new item, the backpack, resulted in a desire for further consumption, But this, as I mentioned, is only a small example. There are more examples of the Diderot effect all around us. We buy a new shirt or dress and immediately begin looking for new shoes to match. We bring home a new couch and suddenly the end tables in our living room appear old and shabby in need of replacement. We purchase a new car and soon begin spending money on car washes, more expensive gasoline, or a parking pass. We move into a new home and use the occasion to replace our existing bedroom set with a new one. In each circumstance, the reality is that we already owned enough shoes and our end tables and bedroom furniture worked just fine before. But because something new had been introduced into our lives, we were immediately drawn into a process of spiraling consumption. Denis Diderot observed and noted this phenomenon in an essay titled, Regrets on Parting with My Old Dressing Gown. In the fictional story, he receives a new elegant dressing gown from his friend, a kind gesture. However, upon receiving the gown, Denny notices all his other possessions begin to look drab and faded compared to it. He begins replacing them, all of them, even the art on the walls. And by the end of the story, Denny notes, I was absolute master of my old dressing gown, but I have become a slave to my new one. In this way, Diderot explains how new consumption often leads to further consumption. But more than that, he argues that we begin identifying with our possessions and search for new things that fit into our specific mold. The purchase of fashion, he would argue, is rarely about the functional use of clothing. It's not just about finding thread to cover our bodies. Instead, the purchase of clothing and everything else represents an opportunity for self-expression. But for this piece, I am more interested in the idea of overaccumulation, how purchases often lead to more unplanned purchases. Because once you understand the principle, you can begin to break its cycle. How then might we overcome the Diderot effect in our lives and resist this pattern of unnecessary consumerism? Let me offer some thoughts. One, become aware it is happening. 
Observe when you are being drawn into spiraling consumption, not because you are in actual need of an item, but only because something new has been introduced. Two, analyze and predict the full cost of future purchases. A store may be having a great sale on a new outfit, but if the new outfit compels you to buy a new pair of shoes or handbag to match, it just became a more expensive purchase than originally assumed. Three, avoid unnecessary new purchases. Realize the Diderot effect is a significant force and overcoming it is very difficult. You may avoid replacing those end tables at first, but eventually, at some point down the road, you are going to break down and buy new ones that better match the new couch. There are times when we have a legitimate need to buy new things, but the best way to overcome the Diderot effect is to never allow it to overpower you in the first place. Four, remind yourself that possessions do not define you. Abundance of life is not found in the things that you own. Your possessions do not define you or your success, no matter what marketers will try to tell you. Five, buy things for their usefulness rather than their status. Stop trying to impress others with your stuff and start trying to impress them with your life. Notice the Diderot effect in your own life, and soon, as you begin to recognize it around you, it will become one less cause of unnecessary consumerism in your home and wallet, assuming that wallet already matches your handbag. You just listened to the post titled Understanding the Diderot Effect and How to Overcome It by Joshua Becker of becomingminimalist.com. And like I mentioned at the top of the show, you can be entered to win a book from The Minimalists and get three spreadsheets from us that will help you optimize your financial life. And all you have to do is come by oldpodcast.com, enter your email address there, and everything will be sent to you automatically. You can also text the word financial to the number 44222 for a speedier way to sign up. And that's going to do it for today. I'll be back with a post from Steve Pavlina on Tuesday. So I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits. Hello, Life Optimizer. This is Justin Mollick, creator and producer of this podcast, but also Optimal Living Daily, the show where I read to you from even more blogs covering finance, productivity, minimalism, personal development, and more from incredible bloggers like Derek Sivers, Zen Habits, Mark and Angel, The Minimalists, and all the ones you hear on this show too. So if you enjoyed today's episode and like taking amazing blogs on the go, come on over to Optimal Living Daily and subscribe to that one too. And together, we'll start optimizing your life. You've been listening to Optimal Finance Daily. Be sure to hit the subscribe button to stay up to date on each new episode and head to oldpodcast.com. That's oldpodcast.com for a free gift as well as more actionable tips and resources to help you maximize your potential. Thanks for joining us. And remember, your optimal life awaits.